the exterior of the virus kind of gets unraveled as it travels through the fluid of the cell, revealing what's inside. Just eight genes. The genes are the instructions as to how to build a virus, a flu virus. Eight may seem like a lot, but it's not. In fact, we humans have over 23,000. And there's something else in the virus too. There's a chemical called polymerase. Now, we've represented this by a photocopier, because essentially it does the same job. It is the machinery required to copy these genes so that more viruses can be made. What it does now is pretty clever because it hijacks the materials within the nucleus of the cell and also its energy supply to allow it to do its dastardly work. Power going in. Genetic material being loaded. Gene instructions. And so the process begins. From when it enters the cell, within about five or six hours, the virus is able to make thousands of copies of its genetic instruction manual. Twelve hours later, more and more of the volunteers' cells are hijacked. Their immune system starts to react, and the patients finally start to feel sick. Meanwhile, inside their cells, the virus is moving into a new phase. Then these new, freshly minted sets of genetic material leave the nucleus and come out here into the body of the cell, the cytoplasm, where they start using the stuff around them to assemble new viruses. And within 24 hours, the virus could have reproduced itself hundreds of thousands of times. Two days into the experiment, our volunteers are beginning to feel the full force of the infection. Tiredness, nausea, and a sore throat. The virus is running amok. This cascading explosion of viruses being created here then burst back out of the cell membrane, ready to cause more mayhem inside your body. This is what's known as an influenza infection. <laughs> 